Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Monday, July 1st, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 11 to 14, and it says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Amen. We thank God this morning for his words of wisdom. We are able to learn from the reading this morning that God's grace, it brings salvation to all of us, to all the earth, to all men and women on the earth boys and girls and it says that his grace his word it teach us that we should deny ungodliness and worldly lust so when we read the word of god and when we are taught by the spirit of god this is what the message is that is given to us what we should do deny ungodliness we should what walk away from worldly loss now you will ask the question what is worldly loss now worldly loss can be considered anything in this world that your heart is yearning after that pull you away from god and more towards the world it could be a desire to be more successful. It could be a desire to have the latest car. It could be a desire to be in a more greater position than you are in right now. This is not like in themselves these things are bad. But when they have become more important than a relationship with Christ, when they point us away from him and draw us towards the world, because that is what it means to have a worldly loss. You are losing after the things that the world make a priority. And the world does not make God a priority. Do you understand? And so we must make sure that our focus is on God and not on the things of the world. And as I stated, I am not saying that you must not desire to have good things. I'm not saying that you must not desire to have a good job, a nice house and car and all of these things. But without God, these things will only lead to a path that God at the end is going to be disappointed in you with. Meaning that they don't allow you to foster a relationship with Christ because you lift Christ out of the equation. And so you see that you are ambitious to have the latest car, the latest house, and all of this. But you realize that this ambition is empty because it is not pointing you towards God and it does not allow you to build and to develop a relationship with God. And so, in turn, you end up losing and to desire these things even more and more, drawing you away further and further away from God. So we are admonished, leave worldly lusts. We should what? Live soberly. We should be sober. We should keep our eyes open. Open to the deception of this world and the deception of the enemy. We should live righteously. We should do right. And we should do what? Live godly. So in spite of the current state of the world, 
how things seem to be all out of control. Things seem bad. The Bible is saying this morning that we must still live godly in this world. So don't follow the world to do the things that are wrong. Do not follow the world to live ungodly. But what? We must live a life of righteousness, a godly life, and we must keep vigilant of these things and vigilant of the deception of the enemy. And as we live in this world, we must what? Look for that blessed hope that the same word informs us about, that same hope of his soon coming, the hope that he will come and it will make all things better. The hope that there will be no more sickness, death, pain, and suffering anymore. And we must look with joy in our hearts. Not dwelling on the things that are happening around you. The negative things, the bad things. Because if you and I focus on those things then our heart is going to fail us for fear and we are going to lose hope and confidence that these things will ever change. And so he's saying that don't focus on that. Look and claim the promises that I have given to you. Because he says that what? He has gone to prepare a better place for us and that when he comes, he will make all things better. That's John 14, 1 to 3. And so, he says that he gave himself, he made that sacrifice that we can be claimed from the world. Understand? So, God, he sacrificed himself on Calvary so that he could purify us of our iniquities. So that he could cleanse us and so that he could refine us and reinvent us, if you want to use that word. He could transform our character and to make us a peculiar people in this present world. So we are called out. St. Peter, he says that what? We are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. We are called for to show the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And so it is important for us to understand that our responsibility as children of God is to let our light shine. We must walk in that peculiarness that God called us to walk in. And we must be zealous for good works. We must be excited about doing good. We must be excited about sharing the love of God. We must not be walking around like unhappy people because that is a misrepresentation of the God that we serve. And so that what? We must do those things that testify of God's goodness. Let the world know that we serve a living God, a God that care about humanity and he has come to save us from our sin. And so friends, as we consider the reading this morning and as we think about what the scripture is saying to us this morning, I pray, one, we will live soberly and secondly, we will live righteously and thirdly, we will live godly and then fourth, I want us to continue to look for that blessed hope, the hope of Jesus' second coming and is soon returned to take us away from all of this. So may God continue to bless and keep you and your families. And may he give you strength. And may he continue to help you in your walk as we continue to walk with him in faith. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen.